Hello and welcome to lesson 66 of the Learning Guitar series. Uh, in this particular lesson, we're going to discuss the shape of G minor when it comes to melodic minor scales. And with it, we're going to kind of complete the cycle as we are covered now with this lesson. We're going to be, you know, we have covered the entire neck of the guitar and the five shapes. The, the particular scale we're looking at is this. And in this case, it's not only the shape of G, it's literally G melodic minor. Uh, the root note in this case would be here. It's actually the third note when you think in terms of the shape. And in fact, if I transpose it, say I'm going to do it in A, here is my A note. And that's like a, a melodic minor. As usual, the lesson comes with a, with a quite comprehensive PDF in terms of uh, intervallic studies when it comes to the shape, starting from seconds all the way to octaves. I'll quickly uh, show it to you. So here it is. Again, it's written in the key of uh, G minor, but you want to transpose this in all keys. Um, and you have all the way to, to octaves, double stops. So even though the uh, the PDF is kind of written all up in the fret uh, 12, 11, 12, uh, all the way to 15, still once you're familiar with the, with the actual exercise and the shape, you want to start you know, in the lower section, in lower section of the guitar. And say it's a lot of seconds and... and then move it a semitone up and do the same and move it a semitone up and do the same as always the important part is as you move up chromatically tell yourself what you're playing so in this case it would be A melodic minor the moment I move up a semitone is B flat melodic minor and then B melodic minor and then C melodic minor again you want to train not only your muscle memory of, of, of any particular scale or things that you study but also the photographic memory of it of course, now, because we have all five shapes, uh, we can also practice the same intervals uh, or the scales themselves, just up and down, or, you know, whatever you want to do. But you can also do it like in five shapes, the same key. So let's take A as an example. Uh, here I have A in the shape of G, the one we're doing uh, for this lesson. Now I also know that after the shape of G, think of the word caged, in case you forget. After the letter G in the world cage, there is letter E, which means that this E shape is coming. And in fact, this is an A melodic minor shape of E. And after the letter E, there is the letter D. In fact, here is A, still A melodic minor, obviously. In this case, we're going to use the shape of um, D. And after the letter D, we go back to the start and we have the letter C. So you can expect to have a C shape now. It's still A melodic minor. We're just playing A melodic minor, just across the entire neck. So here it is. And obviously after the shape of C, think of the word caged, there is the letter A. So now we have A melodic minor in the shape of A. And after, we're back to the shape of G. Which means that now, not only you can practice, and you should at least for the first week, practice the new shape, the G minor shape, chromatically, so you get a bit of muscle memory going on. But also you can pick up, you know, a different key, and I suggest you change key on a daily basis, and, and start, you know, practicing uh, the same key, five shapes. And... As I said, you can do that doing scales up and down, but you might as well do it, uh, say you take intervals of seconds and you just perform that. And then maybe the day after you just interval thirds and then maybe the interval of fourths, so forth and so on. Also a nice way, maybe a little bit more entertaining of uh, practicing this thing can be uh, using one of the one chord begging tracks that uh, some of them are on YouTube. All of them are actually on the Patreon page. And by the way, uh, 
let me thank the Patreon supporters who, um, you know, keeping this project alive. It's not many of you. Wish there was a bit more, but you know, we, we, it's it's. Uh, I I thank you for your support. I mean, it's like it makes it this thing possible. And um, as I was saying, you can use a one chord. You can actually loop a one chord if you want, or um, if you have one of those freeze pedals, you can do the same. Uh, I'm going to use a freeze myself right now, but as I said, you can use any of the backing tracks. Say, let's stick to, to A, I'm just going to, you know, uh, freeze an A note. And again, I can practice maybe the intervals. And then maybe move to the next cage. Next cage. and do the same and then fourths and do the same obviously to do it uh, uh, in one key and as I said maybe change the key so that you don't you know every couple of days I don't know now you do it in A and then tomorrow you do it in C and key of C I'm talking here um, makes the exercising uh, actually it takes a little bit less time obviously because when you're doing five cages you're basically going through five scales when you're doing chromatically i don't know if you go all the way to fret 15 you're doing the same thing kind of 15 times which is very useful when you're trying to develop your muscle memory but at some point given the amount of exercises we do you kind of want to uh, summarize them in a way and as usual you know three weeks is a good amount of time to kind of develop a uh, muscle memory so that you can move on to the next topic without fear that you know that your brain will forget everything and then you have to go back. Another good thing, like when you're practicing uh, like to a backing track or uh, as I say, to a kind of freeze, freezing a note, is also trying to, you know, develop melodic ideas without having to think about necessarily about chord changes. Um, so again, I can freeze, say, like a minor chord, in this case, maybe like a minor major 7. So this is A minor major 7. By the way, you find a lot of these details in the PDF that uh, I attached to, to Lesson 61. Um, so this. So, for example, in this case, we're looking at the shape of G minor, and you, know, you can see the chord is highlighted in blue. And, of course, here is the root note, and that's why this is G melodic minor. Uh, in our case, since we're doing it in A, it's still the same shape, obviously, you know, just doing it where here is my bass note. And so let's, let's freeze this. And now I can just, you know, play melodic minor over it. Of course, you know, I can start from G since that's the topic of this particular lesson. start moving to, you know, the other cages. In the words, to be a little bit more free after a while, obviously. That's the five cages kind of covered one, you know, as I say, trying to trying to be melodic. And I was using fragments of scale and some of the intervalic studies at some point. I think I was doing uh, minor thirds, like thirds type of intervals, fourths. 
as you still you know that's how you 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 develop your own type of phrasing at the end of the day you know phrasing comes from playing a lot you know but once you have the vocabulary so like the interval studies and you see I'll, I'll talk to you later on about what's coming in lesson 67 and 68 use those studies you know as fragments of ideas then you develop them across the neck um, Another aspect of this lesson, which I think is very interesting, um, relates to um, relates to the backing track that comes with it, and which is uploaded to YouTube. I'm going to show you a PDF that comes with it. Uh, the backing track develops over a four chord progression. So the PDF also has got like a brief uh, explanation at the at the beginning of it. The progression is quite simple, just using a, a minor chords uh, in interval of uh, minor thirds. So as I mentioned, the, 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 the backing track starts from um, uh, a G minor chord, and then it moves it uh, uh, in intervals of uh, minor thirds. And what that means is like if this is G minor, a minor third for G would be B flat, so now you have a B flat minor. And then a minor third from B flat is D flat. There is D flat minor. And then a minor third from D flat is E minor. And then a minor third from E is you're back to G minor. That's tough to play as a chord. <laughs> and um, so like a, this kind of progression is kind of useful because you it kind of cycles, you know, not only it's kind of musical, but it cycles. So the backing track is a four chords progression that keeps cycling uh, and every chord is held for uh, eight bars. Um, as you notice, you know, I use the same shape, in this case, a, a E minor shape when it just up the neck. But um, as a progression, this is also very comfortable because the moment you, you start playing the chords in the same area, you will notice, and I'll show you in the PDF in a second, how not only you're playing in the same area, but slowly going up the neck, then cover the entire neck of the guitar. And that's a very useful thing, because it really allows you to verify that you know all the five shapes and the chords, and at the moment we do our pages and chords, is the same uh, chords extensions, I mean, there. So let's, let me give you an example. Now you have G minor, and we're going to start from... Uh, from the shape of E and now you have say uh, G melodic minor the next chord will be B flat minor and for that we're going to use the shape of G the one we just we just added and you will notice that I'm still kind of in the same area the next chord will be D flat minor is here and again i'm still kind of in the same area i'm just moving up kind of a same a semitone and after d flat we have c minor right and again we are we're slowly going up now after C minor, I'm back to G minor, but because I'm here with G minor, now I'm going to use the sh this shape, the shape of D minor, for the G melodic minor scale. And after G, I have B flat minor. I'm already there, shape of E. And for D flat, I'm going to use the shape of A. And after D flat, uh, we are in E minor. Sorry, that was the shape of G, this is the shape of A. And so forth and so on. So, as you notice, just cycling twice the four chords, I went from this area of the neck to this area of the neck, but with very small increments. And I'll show you in the PDF. I, I, I basically wrote uh, some sort of roadmap for you to follow because obviously it's hard to remember all this uh, first. So 
this is your reference. Here you have the chord progression, G minor, B flat, D flat, E minor, and each page is kind of the same. You have the scale that you're supposed to use to create, you know, melodies and stuff. Underneath, I wrote what, from what shape is coming from. So this is a G melodic minor, obviously, melodic minor, shape of E. So this is B flat, melodic minor, shape of G. And you can see the chord, so uh, it's highlighted in blue. And as you can see, as, I'm, as we move up, still G, B flat, but we're slowly going up the neck. And because of that, you're basically using all five shapes you learned on rotation. So G minor is going to be the first time it's going to be here. The second time is going to be here. The third time is going to be here as you cycle through the progression. And you're going up the neck. It's a very good progression to study and verify these kind of things. Um, of course, like you can always use, because you can always use a transposing software say you're doing this G minor, B flat, D flat, E minor, obviously we're only covering four keys out of 12. But if if we take the same progression and we transpose it a semitone down, now we're covering another four. Then we, if we transpose it a semitone up, we're covering another four. In that case, you're covering 12 keys in terms of visualization. But let's start from this, and you know, that should already, should already help. Uh, and as I said, like, Melodic minor and Dorian have just one note of difference. So the same progression. This is what's happening for Dorian. Again, the progression is still the same. And slowly going up the neck. And we know that also minor pentatonic, which is basically five notes out of a Dorian scale, as a matter of fact. Again, as you can see, as you go down the, the chord progression of the backing track, getting all this going up the neck. It's all like before, you know, you, 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 you try to improvise, and, you know, use, uh, use the PDF as a, as a reference to, to verify what all the scales are. And you can do this, you know, without, without backing track at first, or you can, you can even use the backing track as every chord is, uh, it's got eight bars in length. So it gives you enough time to go up and down the scale, even if you're playing, you know, say eight notes or even quarter notes. So I'm going to show you how, you know, say just the first, the first four chords, but just practice as an exercise. So here is G melodic minor. <laughs> Flat melodic minor. D flat melodic minor. E melodic minor. And you're back to G, no? And so forth and so on. So literally, you want to take the PDF. Study this page, the first page, and the transitions from this scale to this scale to this scale to this scale, which is just what I just showed you. And of course, then continue all the way up. Okay. <clears throat> Having done that, you can definitely, you know, you take the, the back and track and, uh, and, you know, and try in this case literally to play, you know, whatever style of music you're into. Uh, you can put the distortions, you can, you know, do pretty much what you want, you know. Um, next lesson, so 67 and 68, we're going to bring in some harmony and theory explaining the harmonization of a melodic minor scale, so we can start talking about the modes that derive from a melodic minor. But also, um, at this stage, more importantly, we're going to look at the triads within each of the scales, the extended triads, and groupings. Uh, so that, that will lead us neatly also to melodic minor, so based on minor major seven kind of thing. Chords, chord extensions, and it's important that we do uh, the harmony and theory part of it so that, uh, you know, we can uh, really understand, you know, not only a minor major seven chord, but all the extensions for each mode, et cetera, et cetera. So exciting times ahead, very musical. Um, 
again, I would like to thank the Patreon supporter for supporting this project or the people subscribing to the YouTube channel. And uh, until next time, thank you very much. Bye.